and everyone. I'm so glad that y'all are here this evening in the classroom and those that are on the air. It's been a long day, but it's a day that God has made, and I'm glad to be here and in it. Uh, I'm going to have a word of prayer first. Never can do enough praying. That's our way of talking to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you at this time just with thanksgiving in my heart, always thanking you. I'm grateful. And, uh, Lord, I can express it in the, the words we have on this earth, how grateful I am to thee. Because you've given life to us. You breathe life into all of us. And you have given your children uh, the Holy Spirit to guide us and to teach us and comfort us when we in trying times. Lord, there's a lot today that's um, going through a whole lot of burdens and different things that they need to uh, take off their back and lay them at your feet, Heavenly Father, because your word say in John 14, the first verse for us, not to we're not supposed to be worried. We're not supposed to let our heart be troubled or afraid. And Lord, I just uh, pray thee that those that are listening believe that and pray about whatever their needs are, but also have thanksgiving in, the, in their heart that you have made a way for us to have peace. You have given us your perfect peace that we can enjoy and relax in through any circumstance, through any storm. And Lord, you are the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. Lord, and I'm just grateful that you are our shepherd. You watch over us no matter what we're going through. And there is no lacking when it comes to you because you love us so much. God loved us so much he gave us only the begotten son. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for our sins. Now, Lord, you're sinless. But despite how wicked and ungrateful we can be, Lord, you still died on the cross for our sins so we can receive eternal life if we believe and confess with our mind that you are the Lord of Lord and King of Kings and that you died for us because of our sin feel wicked souls and that you were resurrected from the grave and you're sitting at the right hand side of the Father right now making intercessory prayers for all of us. So Lord, I thank you for that, Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you. Amen. Now I know I've been in the book of John and I'm going to stay in the book of John until the Lord tell me to uh, you know, stop teaching on the book of John. Um, because there's so much in the book of John, these chapters, and um, for us to learn about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we're here, uh, to give the word out to the people. And not only are you learning, we're gaining and learning too, and getting stronger every day from God to do what he would tell us to do and, and, and say what he tells us to say. And uh, just like as I studied, uh, today and yesterday and through the week and uh, just daily. Um, John 10, 16, if you turn to chapter John 10, 16, um, I'm gonna be in chapter 20 today, but I just want us to turn there just for a second. So you know where I'm coming from uh, today. John 10. Actually, it's 26. I got the erasing off the board and I left the. Uh, um, no, it's. it's, it's um, oh, wait a minute. I got it. I was in the wrong chapter. Oh, okay. Uh, I tell y'all, sometimes, you know, as I get older, my eyes can play tricks on me. They burn a little down. I've been up since early before um, 5 o'clock. Doesn't you got your glasses. 
Anyway, John 26, chapter 10, verse 26. And I have just part of that verse up, up there, and Jesus said this. He said, but you do not believe me. So you do not trust me. You do not trust and follow me. Because you are not my sheep. Now, I don't know about Charlotte, but I want to be one of the Lord's sheep. I want to be right behind uh, you. Let's turn to um, Psalms 23. And I'm going to tell you why I want him to be my shepherd. And I, I want to be one of his sheep. Lord, have mercy. And then we go to 20. I just had to give a little bit of uh, about our Father, our Savior. Psalm 23 reads, The Lord is my shepherd to feed and to guide and shield me. Now who don't want to be uh, guided and shielded and fed? And I shall not want. There's no lacking when it comes to my Lord and Savior. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and staff to guide. They comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. So, I mean, he give us more than enough. He give us so much that it just overflows. Because uh, he wants us to share what he give us to others. Yeah. And uh, then 6 says, surely goodness and mercy an unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell forever through all, all of my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Now, I want to be in the presence of the Lord because, you know, when the Lord is in the presence, I'm going to tell you, the devil don't want to be around. Amen. But he's always around seeking who he can devour. And so that's why we need a good shepherd. And uh, going to, um, and we got a lot here about this um, not believing. Amen. I mean, it, it's, it's a shame, but they just didn't believe. So we'll if you turn to, to, just turn to, uh, just for a little bit, turn to John 9, John chapter 9. I'm just trying to wet your whistle a little. Well, I'm excited because I thought you was going to right into the... I thought I was, too. I'm being led by the Spirit. Raising from the dead. Right. It's going to be there. Amen. But see, you know what? One thing about Jesus, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. Yeah. He prepares for every situation. Amen. And he had prepared the disciples and all the sheep who loved him about what was going to happen. He was telling them. And uh, like Peter, he was telling them, no, no. And he, he had to tell Peter to get behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. He was trying to tell him, no, you don't have to do that. But uh, if we go to, uh, just for a minute, showing how people just didn't believe. And uh, it was the, um, always someone against him that didn't believe. Uh, uh, here in chapter 9, he had brought uh, sight to the blind man, and no one on earth had ever given sight to anyone that was uh, blind. And it says in verse 32, since the beginning of time, it has never been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a blind man. Now they saw this happen, but yet again, but you do not believe me. And so, um, it says in 33, if this man were not from God, 
he would not be able to do anything like this because God would not hear his prayer. And they answered him, and you were born entirely in sins from head to foot, and you presumed to teach us. That's the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees. They were angry mm -hmm. at the man for telling them the truth about Jesus. And then they threw him out of the synagogue. But this shows you that this man didn't have no fear. He really, he did believe in Jesus. He believed that he was a man of God, and he didn't care what they did because he had unbelief in them because they had never healed anybody or did anything good for anybody. They was constantly um, threatening to put somebody out of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And so then 35, it says, Jesus heard that they had put him out of the synagogue. Finding him, he asked, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. My main thing today, children, is that you believe, that you believe, that I believe, that everyone believes, the whole world believes in Jesus, that he is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins, Amen. because of our wickedness. Amen. And he was chastised and beat, you know, for us. And if he hadn't done that, there was no way that we would be saved. Now we need to recognize. And we have to recognize. You either going to live or you're going to die. Choose today. He's not going to make you choose anything. And so um, he asked, answered, who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe. That's why we're here telling you about the word of God, so you will believe. And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and in fact, he is the one who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe in you, in your word. And he worshiped him and reverenced with awe. And this is what um, we are supposed to be doing. Amen. And, and then in um, 39 it said, then Jesus came into the came into this world for judgment to separate those who believe in me from those who reject me. To declare judgment on those who choose to be separated from God so that the sightless will see and those who see will become blind. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of blind people around here today because they see the world, but they don't see Christ. And they don't want to be Christ-like at all. They just want to um, be in the world. And so um, God was constantly um, talking to me and talking to all of us so we can have some light and go to John 12. Uh, verse 36. Okay. And it says, while well, you have the light, believe and trust in the light. That light is, is Christ, Jesus. And he was telling them all along, you know, while you have the light, that is him. Believe and trust in the light. Have faith in it. Hold on to it. Rely on it so that you may become sons of the light, being filled with the light as followers of God. And that's, uh, you know, if you believe in Christ, you're a follower of God. And this is why even in 37, even though he had done so many signs and attesting miracles, right before them, yet they still did not believe and they failed to trust him. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a sad um, situation when you, um, when you fail to trust God. It's a prophecy there, yes. And, it, um, and then it says in 38, like I was saying, he was constantly letting them know 
Uh, this was to fulfill what Isaiah the prophet said, the Lord will, who believed our measures, and to whom has the arm, the power of the Lord, believed, shown, unveiled, and revealed. Therefore they could not believe. For Isaiah said again, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart to keep them from seeing with their eyes and understanding with their heart and being converted. Otherwise, either God will heal them. So there were many people not being healed because of unbelief. Today, children, there are many people that are unhealed because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe when he said, if my word abide in you, and you abide in me, ask what you will in my name, Jesus' name, uh, to God Almighty, that you will be saved, you will be healed. You don't have to be in no poverty. You don't have to be grief-stricken stricken with sorrow where you're so depressed that you take your own life. You just have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is the Son of God. He is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He loved you. He gave his life for you and for me. And you won't be walking around doubting everything. And 46 said, I come as a light into the world. Hmm? Oh. Okay. Nevertheless, going to 42, even many of the leading men believed in him as Savior and Messiah. So it was many who did believe. But because of the Pharisees, they would not confess it. For fear, if they acknowledged him openly, they would be put out of the synagogue and excommunicated. A lot of this go on today. Amen. People don't want to admit the truth about God, Jesus. They'd rather go along with the crowd because they want to be in the end crowd. And they don't realize that they just uh, going to be deep in the ground and dead and decaying and stinking. And, uh, but they will get resurrected again uh, when the Lord returns and be in that lake of fire, uh, burning forever and screaming and gashing of teeth. So we get we got a lot of exciting things to read here, children. So you got to stay tuned into our classes Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday because uh, we just trying to communicate to you um, about our Lord and Savior the truth. And it says, for they love the approval of men. This is what's going on now. People see a lot of terrible things going on with people, but uh, they want the approval of men more than the approval of God. And God is a loving God. He wants us to seek the best for each other and have compassion and forgiveness for one another. And it says, Jesus loudly declared, the one who believes and trusts in me does not believe only in me, but also believe in him who sent me. Now that's very important that we believe in Jesus, but believe in God. As we read through Isaiah and uh, 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 the Old Testament, how people uh, and kings turned their back on God. And that stirred up the wrath of God you know, against the people. They had to go through a lot of trying times and suffering times that they don't really have to go through. But when you turn your back on God, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on you. Or if you do something to one of his children, one of his little sheep, his little lambs, may the Lord have mercy on you. And then uh, it says here, And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. Talking about God. And I have come as a light into the world, so that everyone who believes and trusts in me as Savior, all those who anchor their hope in me and rely on the truth of my message, 
will not continue to live in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge and condemn the world. That is to initiate the final judgment of the world. But he came to save the world. And this is why he came. Whoever rejects me and refuses to accept my teachings has one who judges him. The very word that I spoke with judge and condemned him in the last day. I have never spoken on my initiative. He trying to tell us, listen children, he telling us now he don't speak on his initiative or authority. And I'm not either. But the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment regarding what to say and what to speak. Lord, have mercy. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So these things I speak. I speak in accordance with his exact instruction as the Father has told me. Now, we're going to be in uh, chapter 20 and what's so important about that Jesus was telling us all the whole time why he came down here on earth. He didn't come down here to judge us. He came down here to, not to judge us, but he came down here to give us life and give us a light so we can see. And the light's still here. And the light is still here. Because uh, when he is sending into heaven, he is giving his children the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit guides us, he comforts us, he directs us, he tells us what to say and what not to say. Because he gave his complete instruction from God Almighty. And so did Jesus. Jesus was here and he was, after he was baptized and went into the wilderness for 40 days without food, he was completely led by the Holy Spirit. Every time Satan came up against him, the Holy Spirit told him what to say. When Satan was trying to tempt him and tell him to turn the rocks and the bread, he said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so that's why it's so important for us to read the word of God. You can't eat, you can't live, you can't do anything without the word of God. All you can do is die. And God came so we could have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. But it was already pre-told in Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah 53. I'll be in 20 in a minute. It was already pre-told why he came. And uh, he came for us. And we, I'll just read uh, chapter, uh, Not I'm not going to read the Lord have mercy. I'll do as I'm told him to do. Uh, 53, 1, and I'll read until the Lord, Holy Spirit, tell me to stop. Uh, it says, who has believed, confidently trusted, and relied on and adhered to the message of salvation? That's why Jesus came, so we could have salvation. And to whom, if not, has the arm and the infinite power of the Lord been revealed? For he, the servant of God, grew up before him like a tender shoot plant and a root out of the dry ground. And he has no stately form or majestic splendor that we would look at him, nor handsome appearance that would be attracted to him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and pain and acquainted with grief. And like one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised and we did not appreciate his worth or esteem him. But in fact, he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we ignorantly assume that he was stricken, struck down by God, 
and degraded and humiliated by him. God loved Jesus. Jesus was the only one he could send down here to save our wretched souls. He was the only one. And it says, uh, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our wickedness, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing. The punishment required for our well-being fell on him. And by his stripes, wounds, we are healed. Now, I'm going to tell you, my Lord and Savior wasn't on that cross getting beat for nothing. All the licks and hits he got with them sharp rocks and metal, turning his skin off, was for us so we could be healed of our sicknesses, healed of our diseases. Protected from viruses and everything. But you got to trust in God. You got to rely on God. You got to abide in Him and abide in His Word. And He knows when you're perpetrating a lie of being a fraud. He can look right through your heart like a glass of water. So, you know, you can't fool God. And then it says, All like sheep have gone astray. He knows this. He know we in the flesh and our flesh getting weak. Mm -hmm. But because of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and the Word of God, that, that Word of God and the Holy Spirit just energizes us. When we get weak, it'll make us strong. Hallelujah. There's nothing on this earth that can make you strong like the Word of God. Or give you life like the Word of God. And it says, all like sheep have gone astray, we have turned each one to his own way. And you know our ways are not good. They're not the ways of God. The words say our thoughts are far away as the dew on the ground as God's is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we can't be doing that. But God has caused the wickedness of us all, our sin, our injustice, our wrongdoing to fall on him instead of us. That's how much he loves us. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth to complain or defend himself. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that is sowed before her shears. So he did not open his mouth. When he was on the cross, he was not arguing with nobody or, or, or or fussing or, or telling God to come down there and get him off the cross. He was like a lamb. He didn't complain. He didn't say nothing. But when it got toward the end, and God, God don't love sin. He don't like nothing about it. He hate a liar. He turned his back, and that's when Jesus wept out loud, saying, Abba, Abba, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? And he gave up his spirit back to God. And so, it was already pre-told what he had to do for us. And he did it anyway. Despite the pain that he went through, the humiliation he went through. Even on the cross, the thief was uh, mocking him and the people were mocking him. If you're the son of God, why don't you get down? Why don't you call on some angels to get you? if you be the son of God. But he was not going to give in to that. And he didn't give in to that. And uh, if we go to uh, 20, we see there in the first chapter, uh, after he, the first chapter of 20. First verse? Yeah, first verse. I'm sorry. I didn't get real excited here now. <laughs> oh, Ooh, Jesus. Chapter 20, verse 1. It says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early. It was still dark outside, y'all, according to John. It said it was still dark. Some of them, Matthew and uh, Mark, and say it was, uh, it was, uh, it was daybreak. Early. You know, it was early in the morning. But here it says it was still dark. Uh, saw the stone already removed from the groove across the entrance of the tomb. Uh, some of the uh, chapters, I uh, think uh, Matthew said that an angel moved the stone, you know, rolled it away. Mm -hmm. 
And so she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciples, John, whom Jesus loved and esteemed, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord. No, I'm just in 20. They had, I'm going I'm to get to it. I'm going to go back and some of that. But this is, this is starting this off, the empty tomb, uh, chapter 20. Okay. And they, um, it so, just different it does, out of different ones. I read all of them. Mark is different. Uh, Matthew is a little different. Luke is a little different. They all read different. They uh, add a little. Um, I'm just talking about out of the King James and Amplified. Oh, okay. And so, um, you know, I already said she ran to Simon Peter and the other disciples, John and told him uh, that he was no longer dead. We do not know where they have laid him. Mm -hmm. So Peter and the other disciples left, and they were going to the tomb. And the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter. That was John. He ran ahead mm -hmm. uh, him. And uh, stooping down, looking in, he saw the linen wrappings neatly there. But he did not go in. They were neatly wrapped. And as I read, um, and you know, maybe it's a commentary or something like that. It was saying that um, that would have been impossible for the uh, linen wrappings to be um, folded up all neat like that. Because for one thing, just to um, take the wrappings off, you know, uh, removing the burrow wrappings and the spices from a dead decaying body would have been not only extremely difficult, uh, if not impossible, but overwhelmingly nauseating. You know, the smell and odor. Yeah. And the linen uh, was dirty. You know, he was bleeding and everything. And water was coming out of his side. And it said if a tomb robber had even attempted such a thing, the tomb would have been left uh, in shambles. It would make no sense for a tomb robber to remove a dead body from the wrappings, you know, before stealing it. Yeah. He would have just took the body, but, the uh, right, the whole thing. But the wrappings were there, they were neatly lying there. Uh, and then it says, then Simon came up following him and went into the tomb and saw the linen wrappings neatly lying there. And the burrow face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the other linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Yeah. And uh, just like I had there, but you, but you do not believe me, uh, even to this day, people don't, but a lot of people don't believe that the, uh, Jesus was resurrected. You know, the they don't, in the flesh. So, uh, some, so the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went in too and he saw the wrappings and the face cloth and believed without any doubt that Jesus had risen from the dead. That was John. Because yeah. John was listening to him attentively the whole time when he was telling the story about what was going to happen to him and he never once rebuked him. Mm -hmm. He believed Jesus and he loved Jesus which we know Peter had rebuked him. And it says here, for yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Amen. They didn't believe that. And then the disciples went back again to their homes because, you know, they were scared. You know, because the body was gone. The body was gone. Amen. And then uh, it says, Mary, who had returned... She went back. Mary, who had returned, was standing outside the tomb sobbing. And so as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the foot, where the body of Jesus had been. And you know, where it had been laid. And so... Um, after saying this, she she turned around. No, excuse me, I jumped down too far. 
And they said to her, Woman, why are you crying? And she told them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And after saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, and, you know, I read in the, uh, one of the other books, is because um, he hadn't let himself be known to her, you know, that that, he, that, that was him. Mm -hmm. He hadn't let herself be known. And that's why she didn't recognize him, because she, after all, he had been beat. He had holes in his hands, his feet. And uh, I believe his face probably was disfigured, because when he had this crown on his head, they was beating down on his head they with uh, he with so reeds. Right. Because they were beating him up. Right. And see, they had been beaten across his face yeah, and beaten on his head and just uh, turned the very skin off of him. In fact, when it was time for him to carry the cross uh, up the hill, he couldn't even carry the cross. They had to get someone that, uh, and he wasn't a volunteer. They told him he had to carry that cross. So he, he carried the cross for us. Uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, you know, up to where they, uh, you know, crucified him. The place of a skull, they said. And um, it says here, so they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull. It's which Hebrew, Golgotha. And that's where they crucified him, and the other two, they crucified uh, with him. Uh, it's amazing. But that's, that's what had happened. And then going back to 20, uh, where they, she had turned and saw Jesus standing there, but she, like I said, she didn't know who he was. Amen. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? For whom are you looking? Supposing that he was a gardener, she replied, Sir, if you are the one who carried away him, carried him away from here, tell me where you put him, and I'll take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Ralph Boney. And she knew that man didn't know her name, you know, the gardener, but he said it which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not hold me. Because you know she wanted to run right up on him. Mm -hmm. And it uh, says, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, and my Father, and your God. And Mary Magdalene came reporting to the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things um, to her. And so then 19 says, so when it was evening on the same day, the first day of the week, though the disciples were meeting behind barred doors, they had the doors barred up, you know, locked up uh, for fear of the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace to you. You know, it's his peace. Mm -hmm. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with great joy. And God wants us to be filled with joy, not mm -hmm. fear. And then Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I send you as my representatives. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Hmm. See? Amen. Receive the Holy Spirit. Turn to Acts 1 8, just for a minute here. Acts 1 8. It's just right next door to this. Um, it says here, but you will receive power 
and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. And then uh, also uh, verses 2, going to turn to chapter 2 in Acts. 1 through 3 says, uh, and we're going to be getting it. In fact, you went over some of that over the weekend. But anyway, we know in Acts, that's when the Holy Spirit fell down on um, them when they were, right, they were filled with the Holy Spirit uh, throughout, you know, and they began to speak in tongues. But uh, I just wanted to bring that up because he had breathed on them because there was no way they was going to go out and teach anybody or seek other people because they were too afraid. They probably wouldn't even went to the upper room. No, no work. But when that Holy it was, Spirit... It was with the bar, the bar doors. Amen. When that Holy Spirit get on you, you know, you become a new create creature. Amen. You, you're not the same anymore. Amen. If you was shaking and nervous all the time and can't speak up, Believe me, you will be speaking in the name Amen. of the Lord. Our Lord and Savior, you will be speaking up. Amen. But uh, anyway, then it says here, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven because of their faith. If you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained and remain unforgiven because of their unbelief. Children, belief in God is it's necessary. But Thomas, one of the twelve disciples who was called Didymus, the, the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, we have seen the Lord. But he said, unless I see his hands and the marks of the nails and put my finger into the nail prints, and put my hand into his side, I would never believe. That's a sad thing to say about our Lord and Savior. I never know. I know it. And they on their way straight to hell. Wow. No need me making it nice. Keep it is no nice. Keep reading. So okay. They didn't say. And eight days later, the, the disciples were again inside the house, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the doors. Even though they were barred, he just walked right through them Amen. and stood among them and said, Peace to you. He wants us to have peace, children, no matter all the stuff going on today. Joy and peace. And then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger and see my hand. Put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be unbelieving. But stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, do you now believe? Blessed and happy and spiritually secure and favored by God are those who did not see me and yet believe. Children, we weren't there to Amen. see it. But you can believe it today. There's some more verses. We can believe it today. Yes. And then it says, uh, there are also many other signs of testing miracles that Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples, mm -hmm. which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe with deep abiding trust that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, the Son of God, that by believing, and trusting in and relying on him, you may have life in his name. Praise and that's, that's why it's so important to believe. To believe. Have, faith in God. have faith in God. And you can read your Bible. The Bible is the truth. Uh, and we can't, we got to read. And that's why we, we have classes and we're going over everything with you. And it says here, biblically, uh, infallibility is the belief that that what the Bible says regarding matters of faith and Christian practices, holy 
useful and true. It is the, the belief that the Bible is completely trustworthy as a guide to salvation and life of faith and will not fail and accomplish its purpose. And, it, and it, the Bible will not fail. That is the word. The word is Christ. He is the word. There's no error in my Jesus. There is no, uh, he is dependable. He is precise. Uh, his word is impeccable. His word is the truth. And, uh, it's, and you can read the Bible. It's, it, he showed himself alive after his passion by infallible proof, by being seen 40 days and speaking things pertaining to the kingdom of God uh, before he even uh, left uh, this earth. Uh, he's faultless, he's flawless, and it's guaranteed to all of us if we believe in Christ, we trust him and rely on him, that we can ask whatever we need. And he will make sure we receive it. But you got to believe him. You have to trust in him. And you have to believe that he is the son of God. And that he was sent here from God. So we can receive life. Amen. Amen. And I, I thank you all for being here this evening. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you receive my Lord and Savior so you can have life and light. And stop living in darkness and fear and have peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, I thank you and I ask you to lift up anyone that's feeling low and depressed. Let them know they don't have to be depressed. They don't, they shouldn't be depressed if they have faith in you, Lord, and rely on you. There's no need in them because you love them. You are the shepherd. You're the good shepherd, and you watch over us and take care of us and protect us from anything that's trying to cause us harm. But Lord, just let them know if they have unbelief in them and they run around afraid is because they lack belief and faith in you. And that unbelief and faith will just cause destruction on them and bring them uh, no life and no peace but an early death. Lord, just, uh, I thank you for everything you've done, and I just ask you to continue to be with the listeners and their families and loved ones. Uh, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that uh, comforts us and guides us and teaches us and energizes us in your Holy Word. Thank you, Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.